Good morning, and a little bit later today, welcome to Tuesday the 13th of November 2012. Uh, apologies for the glasses, but I've noticed I'm squinting in all the other videos, so if you can't see my eyes, there they are, um, and we'll go through this program fairly quickly today. Uh, it's good for radio, I suppose. The first uh, link is uh, the Liquorize booklet for today, which is bit.ly forward slash L4L News 13 dash 11 dash 12. And our first section is the events section. And you can't fail to see the uh, wise building the future of education site up there. Um, there's a live stream and other various uh, bits and pieces. It'll take you a long time to look through that site. But if you're interested in the future of education and the big summit that's been held at Qatar, go along to bit.ly bit forward slash underscore wise w-i-s-e and that'll take you to the site and you can see everything that's happening there. Okay, moving quickly on, we're going to look at online, offline tools for recording practice. Now, uh, a couple of sessions ago someone on Twitter uh, I think it was Olotti was talking to Zoe Ross 19 about uh, teacher standards and, and using Evernote for evidence and well, that was a really good idea and um, Ian H on Twitter sort of talked about using that and building an evidence base taking Google um, Docs and I'd like to show you this um, audio boo and this uh, site is called IFTT, I -F -T -T -T, and it basically it's a piece of code on the web that you can use to link different applications. So I thought I might show you uh, how you could use it in the classroom. If you have uh, Audio Boo, and there's my Audio Boo on my iPhone 5, if you uh, actually recorded and you have to have permission, obviously, in your school for the policy to do this. Some conversation with children. So if I record here and wait for it to play and I can say, hello, this is a quick test to Audio Boo. Pause that. Publish it. And save and upload. Hopefully you can see that. OK, now I've got that online as an audio boo, but if I want to go to Evernote and I set up an Evernote for myself and I want to push that to Evernote, I go to IFT, which is uh, interesting. Oh, here we go. I'm going to check now. That's what I do. I check now. So I'm going to trigger it. And it should trigger the recipe. And if I go back to Evernote, I should get, if I refresh it, the audio boo, and there it is. And if I play it, it'll be the same audio boo. So there you go. That's one way of collecting evidence straight from your classroom, from your iPhone, straight into an Evernote online. And again, you could then archive that using um, the different notes. Okay, looking at the next link, again, I'm really interested in showing links that are useful specifically for teachers to pull evidence together and then they can actually network out and show other people how to do that. So this is Class Droid and this is uh, bit.ly forward slash Class Droid and it's a lovely application by um, John McClear and if you don't know John McClear's site it's mcclear.co.uk and he has an amazing um, Android application which allows you to quickly take a picture of a student's work grade it and upload to pupils or class learning portfolio so again the same idea okay the next one is sync tube now sync tube is a really interesting site it takes videos from uh, all over the place all over the web apologies for the uh, uh, big vans backing up outside which you can probably hear and um this YouTube uh, sort of skinner, it takes YouTube, it takes Blip TV, it takes Vimeo, SoundCloud, Ustream, Dailymotion, Justin TV, Twitch TV, Livestream, SlideShare, Imager. And it allows you to create a room where people can all come and discuss 
in chat and see the actual video simultaneously. Now, I know you've got that in Google Hangouts, but this is quite good. I've set one up and here's my room and I'm going to click on my room and I'm going to go to my room. And you can see I've set up this room with about 10 or 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 videos to do with uh, digital uh, literacies uh, that are going on in different universities. I can actually um, turn on the thumbnails or turn them off. I can uh, make them as a list or not a list. I can lock my list. I can invite other people, give them a, a password to the room. I can turn on a webcam, which doesn't seem to happen um, at the moment. I can actually load a different URL. I can toggle my playlist to other playlists. I can um, skip this video and on to the next one. And basically, this allows people at distance to see the same video and to chat about it. Another really good tool, maybe not for in school, but for teachers and for CPD. This is a nice, quick, easy tool. And that is bit.ly forward slash sync tube. Really recommend you go along and see that one. That's a really good one. Now, here's another one that does the same thing with text. And I have used this with children in school. It's uh, etherpad.org. And John McClear has written lots of plugins for this as well. So if you go back to the John McClear site I mentioned earlier and see that, this allows you basically to go off and click on a web page, start a web page off, and have several people writing from computers simultaneously on the page. So you could have several children in class writing on their machines. And what I would do is put up the actual um, writing from the Ether, Etherpad site um, on a whiteboard. But you could also have people at distance contributing as well. And we did that. We put um, pupils in different classrooms. And now I just want to show you a quick video. If you're listening on audio, you'll get the gist. But uh, I would really tune into the video on YouTube to see exactly what this works like, because it's a brilliant tool. Etherpad, go along. And here's the video. This is Primary Pad, and this is a recording played back of the writing of two boys who were tasked with being the Spanish and their reactions to being beaten as the Armada. It's a lovely tool. It allows people to write synchronously. That's four or five, six, seven, sixteen people for the professional app, um, synchronously, all on the same page. So as they put out their opinions about being beaten, I decided to jump in and give them several questions that would up the pace of the lesson, pump prime them, to go off and find information about the people and events uh, around the Armada. As I did this, and I didn't do it very well because I've got a few typos there in my typing I can see, but then it's a good diagnostic, um, they went off and found the information. And then we evolved it to getting the other groups, who were the English, to ask them a question that they had to find the answer to on the internet. And the question they asked them was, how long did Philip and Elizabeth reign? Which was quite interesting. And so they had to go off and find that information from at least three internet sites so they could actually find the proper provenance for this information. So not only do they have to go off and respond to a question, they have to reflect on that question, find the core information and bring it back to this particular writing task, which then has to go through a bit of reflectivity on their part, which is the nice bit about this uh, particular tool. So as you can see coming up at the top there now, they're actually putting in 44 years Elizabeth, 42 years uh, Philip. They've got that from answers.com. Then they've gone to Wikipedia and looked it up, probably the simple English Wikipedia. And then they're looking up both Elizabeth and Philip on Wikipedia, cross-referencing those um, core bits of provenance. And at the bottom, you can see they're putting in the actual information, which they can then take and put in to a class wiki of their own. Go along to that particular one, which is um, bit.ly forward slash creative T. And that'll show you exactly what I did with a group of children in class. OK, the next section is... Reflective blogs for teachers. 
And that's uh, that bundle is bitly.com forward slash bundles forward slash iBeams forward slash G. And that uh, will bring you along to two websites. One, Pedagogy on the Run, which is an amazing site, lovely site. And uh, it's looking at what are good questioning strategies for teachers. And that is at uh, bit.ly forward slash teach questions. And it talks about uh, different taxonomies, questions as learning objectives, uh, different things that you can uh, think about and it also has a lovely uh, video of Dylan William talking about uh, the process so really really good go along there and have a good look at that that actually if I could find the link is uh, is Francis Gilbert's blog so pedagogy on the run and the second blog which really is an excellent blog which has Loads and loads of excellent posts um, is Learning With Ease, which is uh, Tim Buck Teeth on Twitter, at Tim Buck Teeth on Twitter, if I can keep my teeth in. And, uh, of course, Steve Wheeler is Tim Buck Teeth, and this is all about uh, reasons teachers don't blog. So you should go along and have a look at both of those. And lastly, and I'm just going to be a very, very short broadcast this week, uh, this is off the public service publicservice.co.uk it's um it's a little uh, article on um why michael gove wants to share school children data um obviously he's talking about wanting to share the data for um good reasons we want to give organizations greater freedom to use extracts of data for wider purposes while still ensuring ensuring its confidentiality and security um obviously he's uh, using the excuse or the reason that um, uh, researchers have to sort of go through so much um, red tape to get hold of this data that uh, he wants to make it easier. But um, I, I also like uh, the last uh, couple of lines towards the end of the uh, particular blog. It says, it could also help stimulate the market for innovative tools and services which present anonymized versions of the data, he added. Just a little thought there for you um, in terms of monetizing uh, your data, our data that we have, um, and what he proposes to do with it. So I should keep a strong uh, eye on that because um, I'm really not a big fan of uh, data that's actually confidential opened out to commercial firms in that way, even if it is anonymized. Still not quite sure that that is capable, we're capable of doing that. And I hope you have another marvellous evening or morning or whenever you listen to this uh, podcast or look at it on um, YouTube or all the other various places that are online. And I wish you a good day. Bye now.